I wonder if you've been looking and wondering why there are three present bags on the table. Well, inside these bags, I have three sheep, and all of them were given me as a present. I have lots more sheep, but Martin said I had to keep this short, so I've only bought three of them to share with you. The first sheep I've bought to share with you is a bungee jumping sheep. Can you see him? He's beautiful. That's my first sheep. The second sheep I've bought to share with you is my leggy sheep that sits on the edge of the mantelpiece. And the third sheep I've bought to share with you is Softy, a real beanbaggy sheep that's lovely and soft. This was a present from my last superintendent who went on a sabbatical to New Zealand. She said, I looked at this and thought of you. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned about that. We have a saying that sheep are very foolish and they follow like sheep, we say, when someone's being a bit silly. Well, I used to live in Wales by a huge moorland called the Brecon Beacons. And this moorland was vast and it was covered in sheep. And when you drove over the Brecon Beacons, where were the sheep? Were they out where the good green grass was? Absolutely not. They were on the roadside, as close to the tarmac as they could be, and just as you drove up, they would suddenly just walk across in front of you, making you, the driver, have to put your brakes on really quickly. I am positive they knew exactly what they were doing. They were not silly sheep at all. Those sort of sheep, I feel, are like my bungee jumping sheep. They're like the sheep who have got a little bit of adventure in them, who actually trust that they're not going to get hurt. But just, just having a good time, enjoying themselves. Sheep can move at a very fast rate. Have you ever seen them in a field when suddenly they take off and they can absolutely whiz down the field? I used to watch one man and his dog, and I was amazed how fast the sheep would... Can you actually see him? How fast the sheep could, to, could go. Now, this is like my leggy sheep. I don't actually know what it means to run fast. I have to tell you that. It's not something in my nature. And my leggy sheep tends to sit around quite a lot because he belongs to me. But... We don't have to be active physically. We can actually be very active in our minds as well. So it's not just about how far we can go when we run, but how far can we go when we think and act and do things. So that's my leggy sheep. And then there's softy. Years and years ago, human beings realized what a good resource the sheep's wool was. It became what they wore, it became good insulation, and it's lovely because it's taken off the sheep and it doesn't hurt the sheep. Well, I'm told it doesn't anyway. They might feel a bit foolish when they're all bare and it's cold, but it doesn't actually hurt them to take it off them. I was walking down a road one day and in the gutter, lying in the gutter, the rain was coming down, there was a lamb and the water was rolling over the top of this lamb, and I didn't really know what to do. So I thought, well, I can't leave him there, and I picked him up out of the gutter, and it was like lifting a woolen, car a woolen cardigan out of the washing machine. The rain, just all the water just poured down, and you felt as though you could have squeezed all the water out of him. But when we put on a woolen garment, we feel very comforted and warm and held, we feel as though we've found something that we can snuggle up into. When we come to worship God, the image of sheep is not far from our language. Some of our most well-known passages in the Bible have the imagery of sheep in them. There's the Lord's my shepherd from Psalm 23, even people that don't go to church seem to know about that one. 
The very word pastor as a minister means somebody who is pastoral, who shepherds people. And there's a very well-known parable about a lost sheep. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. He knows us by name. He finds us even when we're lost. But not only is he the good shepherd, he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So he becomes for us both the sacrifice and saviour, the one that we're called to imitate and follow. Sometimes a church congregation is referred to as a flock. I look at you and I don't see many sheep. (laughs) I see lots of individuals. But today, we're going to have a baptism. We are welcoming Tyamika into the flock here. Now, as you grow up, Tyamika, I don't know if you're going to be a bungee jumping sheep, lots of adventure, not really knowing whether or not you're going to get into scrapes, I don't know if you're going to be a leggy sheep, whether you're going to go far, whether you're going to have flights of imagination. I don't know if you're going to be a softy sheep, giving lots of comfort and encouragement to people. All I know is that who we are is God's gift to us, but what we become is our gift back to God. So my prayer is that as you grow up, you will know that Jesus is your good shepherd, that he's the saviour and the Lord of all of us, and that as each of us follow and trust, we know the one who knows us by name.